I'd like to thank SAGES for the opportunity to present our work. My name is Sharba al Hajj from the Carolinas Medical Center, and I will be presenting on the impact of paniculectomy and complex abdominal wall reconstruction, a propensity-matched analysis in 624 patients. Here are disclosures. Ventral hernia repairs are one of the most common operations performed in the world, and incisional and ventral hernias are more likely to occur or recur in obese patients. With rising rates of obesity across the world, optimized management of these complex patients will be of increasing importance. Paniculectomy is often considered as an adjunct to hernia repair in these patients, but recommendations, long-term outcomes, and quality of life remain unclear. For obese patients undergoing abdominal wall reconstruction, concomitant paniculectomy can afford many benefits. It can allow for these medically and surgically complex patients to undergo one procedure as opposed to two major operations and anesthetic exposures. Over 14% of patients who are initially denied concomitant paniculectomy by insurance ultimately require a salvage paniculectomy, putting the patient and underlying mesh from the hernia repair at repeated risk for infection, complication, and added cost. Furthermore, paniculectomy offers improved exposure to the abdominal wall, removal of scarred and poorly perfused tissues, decreased tension on the hernia repair, and improved cosmetic outcomes. However, despite the benefits, concomitant paniculectomy has been believed to be too risky by some surgeons due to the fear of increased wound complications and the effects that those can have on hernia recurrence. Prior studies have yet to reach a consensus, but recent research shows that concomitant paniculectomy may afford improved long-term hernia recurrence rates. The aim of our study was to evaluate the outcomes and quality of life of patients undergoing abdominal wall reconstruction with concomitant paniculectomy versus those undergoing abdominal wall reconstruction alone. Using our single institution prospective hernia database, all patients undergoing open abdominal wall reconstruction with adequate preoperative imaging for volumetric analysis were identified. The primary outcomes of interest were wound complications and quality of life. And secondary outcomes included postoperative complications, length of stay, and hernia recurrence. All paniculectomies were performed by either plastic surgeons or specifically trained abdominal wall reconstruction surgeons. The Carolina's Comfort Scale is a well documented and proven hernia specific questionnaire for patients undergoing hernia repair with mesh. It measures pain, movement limitations, and the sensation of mesh for eight different daily activities. Each question is answered on a scale of zero to five, with zero being no symptoms and five being disabling symptoms. These answers are totaled and can range from zero to 115, or it can be averaged for each individual symptom or activity. It has been demonstrated to be more effective determining quality of life and a more patient-friendly survey than the well-established SF36. We use a conservative estimate of unideal quality of life at greater than or equal to two meaning mild and or bothersome symptoms. Using previously described volumetric measurement techniques, subcutaneous fat volume, seen here in blue, was measured for all patients and used for propensity matching. This metric was used in an attempt to analyze the fat content of patients and best estimate panis size. 1,178 patients met inclusion criteria, with 397 having undergone concomitant paniculectomy. A propensity match analysis was performed, matching on age, hernia defect area, preoperative subcutaneous fat volume, tobacco use, and diabetes. This yielded a 312 patient propensity match. Patient characteristics and comorbidities were largely similar between the two groups. The only differences noted were a higher rate of female patients in the paniculectomy group, which is something that has been well described in prior literature, as well as a slightly higher BMI in the paniculectomy group at 35.7 versus 34.7. Hernia characteristics were again largely similar. Defect area and subcutaneous fat volume were similar as they were match criteria. Paniculectomy patients did have a much higher rate of prior failed hernias. Operatively, paniculectomy patients were more likely to undergo component separation and mesh excision. However, CDC wound class and operative time were similar between the two groups. Overall wound complications were higher in the paniculectomy group. However, when evaluating specific wound complications, only superficial wound breakdown was higher in the paniculectomy group with a rate of 24% versus 14%, possibly due to the longer incisions required for paniculectomy 
or the increased tissue confinement. Interestingly, we did not appreciate an increased rate of seromas requiring intervention, as this is frequently described after paniculectomy. This may be due to our minimization of undermining of the skin flaps and utilization of drains. Despite increased superficial wound breakdown, infectious complications such as wound infection, cellulitis, and mesh infection were statistically the same. Other postoperative outcomes were again statistically similar, including length of stay and readmission. Hernia recurrence was also the same with mean follow-up of over 27 months in both groups. The only postoperative complication that was higher in the paniculectomy group was AKI, with a rate of 12.5% versus 6.4% in the non-paniculectomy group. Quality of life is an important aspect to consider when performing elective operations. Data was available on an average of 139 patients at each time period, two weeks, one month, six months, and 12 months. On these graphs, the percentage of patients reporting unideal quality of life, a Carolina's comfort scale score greater than or equal to two, is seen on the y-axis. Mesh sensation and pain were similar between the groups in both short and long-term analysis. Overall quality of life was also similar at all time points. The only measure that showed worse quality of life in the paniculectomy group was activity limitation at 12 months compared to the non-paniculectomy group. We hypothesize that these patients still have improved mobility from their preoperative state, as has been described in prior studies, but we were unable to assess this as we did not have preoperative quality of life data. A limitation of the CCS in this setting is that we were unable to assess satisfaction with, co with cosmetic outcomes after surgery. In conclusion, concomitant paniculectomy minimally increases wound complications without long-term hernia effects and, and without decreasing quality of life. Paniculectomy should be considered in appropriate patients, and combining abdominal wall reconstruction with paniculectomy can eliminate the need for multiple major operations and anesthetic exposures in these complex patients. Thank you.